Sydney auctions are booming. Let's have a look. Good evening, everyone. I'm Florian Heiser, and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my Stein right here as always, and I thought we'd have a look at this article from news.com.au because, frankly, I find it quite hard to believe. So, the Sydney auctions, a cash splash from buyers, calm sellers over the illness fears. Now, here's the question. Here's, here's one take to look at it. They're framing it that buyers are just rushing out there, panically buying up one property after another after another. You know, they are. They are helping, helping to drive up the property prices. It's going to keep powering up regardless that every other aspect of the economy is slowing down. Unemployment is looking like next month's results are going to be very interesting. Every company after every company is laying off workers. But no, property still powering up. Or, or here's another question. Here's another take. Could it be, could it be that buyers are so desperate they'll leap onto any sale? And of course, we're only going to see the hype the hype, the rare unicorn exceptions in the news. But our buyers may be taking whatever they can right now. So we'll have to see, guys. We will have to see. What do you think? Do you think this article will just be about the top quartile properties in Sydney? Let's find out. So, many home sellers were understandably nervous about their auctions this week, given the illness. But many got better results than expected with one seller netting 750000 above reserve. Okay, these are the unicorns that they're talking about. They're not discussing, well, what about all the properties that get passed in and the results are never updated, that they just ignore. Because there's a positive response bias in the information that they're basing their auction clearance rate data on. We've got evidence of that now. If you want to see that, visit my website. So... Fears the illness would discourage bidding activity at Sydney auctions proved unfounded as sellers continued to score big prices under the hammer on Saturday. There were close to 500 properties scheduled to go to auction and preliminary indicators showed the majority were a success for the seller with some sales attracting more than 10 registrations. A large contingent of vendors appeared to be nervous going into the week with research group CoreLogic revealing pre-auction sales increased. So there you have it. While other auctions were brought forward. So that's that's the real important sign there. Sellers are getting nervous in this current market. Rescheduled sales included the auction for a waterfront apartment with sweeping views of Elizabeth Bay, which, which was originally due to go to Under the Hammer in April. Well, I mean, have a look. This isn't normal property. This isn't the normal house that those of us, well, that most of us are going to live in. The majority of people are going to live in. And I'm just trying to bring up a, a diagram here to show everyone. And what I'll show you all here is, you know, look at the unit price growth. This is showing the disparity in growth in units around Sydney and the price growth. So, we, yeah, we're seeing unicorns here. But what's what I would say is the important takeaway is that vendors are getting nervous. Selling agent Jason Boone of Richardson and Wrench Elizabeth Bay said the auction was brought forward because of, Ill because of the illness, but there was considerable buyer interest. The auction was crazy, he said, adding there were nine registered bidders and more than 80 groups inspected the home over the shortened marketing campaign. The illness made no difference to the price. A property like this hasn't come up in the block for about 30 years, Mr. Boone said. A Randwick house held by five generations of the same family sold under the hammer for $2.53 million. <clears throat> there were six registered bidders vying for the Pine Street home, including a couple viewing the auction via online streaming platform Auction Now. <laughs> Are you kidding? Well, okay, I guess, you know, buying houses online. Selling agents, Chris Chantalara, of the agency New South Wales said there was strong interest in the deceased estate because it offered scope to be renovated. We originally expected three buyers to register, but in the end it was six. The sellers were very happy, she said. The buyers were Christine Leinhardt and Robert Greenholg, who recently sold a home in Surrey Hills 
and with a baby on the way, we're looking for something bigger. Why, why don't people take names anymore? What the, you know, what's going on, guys? Why don't people get married like in the old days? I guess I'm just too old-fashioned. I'm, I'm just too old-fashioned, I think. <laughs> they received strong competition from another bidder who tried to slow the auction down with $10,000 and $1,000 bids, but remained in, content in contention for the property until the bidding was at 2.52 million. Oh, those pesky people bidding up in only $1,000 increments. Mr. Greenhog, a champion sailor, said they liked the size of the property and planned to renovate the home down the track. Auctioneer Thomas McLean got a surprise when one of the bidders tried to open the offers at 600000 The bid was turned down and an accepted opening offer later came in at $2.2 million. Okay, so you've got people here trying to trying to snap up a bargain amid the fear. I think maybe a little bit too early. Maybe a little bit too early. You just got to wait. You just have to wait. Mr. McLean said the market remained in good shape, but sellers may need to be more conservative when setting their reserves. I mean, this is a funny and a similar thing. I I remember I used to buy computer equipment at auctions and I'd go there and test it out and have a look at it. And I remember there were these machines that were just empty cases. There was nothing in them. I checked them all. And I remember bidding, you know, a couple of dollars for them because that's all they were worth. The parts in there were worth nothing. And they laughed at me and other people were bidding hundreds of dollars for empty cases, which didn't have any components in them. I thought it was quite funny. Prices in the inner west remain consistent with what buyers were paying before the outbreak. A two-bedroom ground floor unit with a large garden view in Newtown sold under the hammer for close to its estimated January value. The vendors of the Bedford Street home set the reserve at 1.2 based on their appraisal two months ago and it sold under the hammer at 1.225. The buyers were, in, were an Epping couple who viewed the home for the first time that morning and decided to register on a whim. They had recently sold their home and said they weren't put off by the illness. Well, this, this is the thing, guys. <clears throat> People aren't taking it seriously in Australia. Not yet. You've seen the footage of of the beaches in Sydney, haven't you? Of the nightlife in Brisbane. People aren't taking it seriously yet. We sold in a, in a uh, pandemic and we're buying it, one the man said. We all still need a roof over our heads. Well, no, it hasn't actually, it hasn't actually become a serious issue in this nation yet. You'd hate to, you'd hate to have sold and then buying straight in a few months later and then prices adjust. I mean, the market's crashing. Property prices, are they going to stay, <laughs> are they going to stay up if people are unable to pay their mortgages and are forced to sell? Then we have it again why the banks are offering people these opportunities. These opportunities to uh, to stay. You know, the six-month waiver that's attached to the end of their mortgage. There was strong competition from three other registered bidders, with many onlookers observing the sale online. Selling agent Adrian Tezalvalas of McGrath Newton said most of the attendees were serious bidders. Vendors Natalie and Dominic Hahnman told the Sunday Telegraph they were confident before the auction given Newton's enduring appeal for property bidders. It is times like this you do get nerves but we knew there would be people registered it went quite well. So unit in the luxury property sold for over four million dollars. So we're not looking at the average stuff here. In uh, Drummond a four-bedroom waterfront apartment sold under the hammer for 4.2 million Selling agent Matthew Ward of Ward Real Estate said the home on Victoria Place was large for the area. In the northwest, a crowd of nearly 100 people filled the front lawn of a five-bedroom house in Balcombe Hills to watch it go under the hammer. <clears throat> the property on Billeroy Ave sold for 1.12 yesterday, 120 over the reserve, and 170 over the price guide. 15 bidders, bidders registered for the auction with selling nights selling agents Karen Jeffries and John Grayson of LJ Hooker Castle Hills so there you have it. have it guys so what do you think are we seeing average properties here are we seeing unicorns or are we just seeing the city market hasn't actually responded to what's going on 
Auctioneer Stu Benson received 19 bids and said social distancing was encouraged. Sure it was, mate. The auction was otherwise normal. Doesn't look like it. Does it? Upgrading, downsizing, or moving areas isn't a discretionary purchase, Mr. Benson said. It's not a new jacket, shoes, or that fancy dinner you can go to without. People's reasons for wanting or needing to move hasn't changed. A ride auction that was brought forward two weeks resulted in a 1.45 million sale, which was level with the reserve price. Selling agent Connor Arnold of Richardson and Wrench Ride said the auction was earlier than originally planned to preempt any stricter measures to contain the illness. Eight parties registered to bid for the Green Avenue home, starting the auction at 1.2 million. The buyers were a couple planning to marry in September. They were delighted to have gotten to the market now while they still can, he said, for $1.2 million. I hope they don't lose their jobs with the way the economy is going. I, I guess, I mean, don't people realize these things can happen? We'll have to wait and see, guys. We'll have to wait and see. I mean, the sailor. Isn't that a career at risk right now? Months of delay? Sporting events are cancelled all around the world? Wouldn't you wait? Wouldn't you wait? Well, let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below, everyone. Do you think this is a sign that the market hasn't quite adapted? Or are people just shooting ahead? Or are we just being shown a few unicorn properties at the upper quartile, which are in high demand? Let me know your thoughts and opinions below, everyone. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and you want to help us produce more content, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel here on YouTube or on Patreon for a small monthly fee. You can support us via our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay for your, by using your consumer purchases. We receive a small advertiser's commission. We also have affiliate links at Independent Reserve or KuCoin for the crypto traders out there. And finally, merch you can get from the Highs that Says website or Teespring. We also have PayPal if you want to support us that way. Thank you all, everyone. Have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.